Welcome. Welcome to Interdependence Salon number five. Water is life. Paya Hunadu, the place where there will always be water, is what you're looking at. At the edge of one of thousands of interlocking glacial lakes that terraform the thousands of miles between the High Sierra and the High Rockies, there sits one lake in particular a dry lake now for more than a hundred years since LA began exporting water from here to there. And at the edge of this dry lake sits like a slumbering giant, a tin man, an industrial ruin. This ruin is the star of today's salon, PPG. Pittsburgh Plate Glass Factory. When it was at its high point, it was the second largest employer in the colonized Payahunadu, known as the Owens Valley. Metabolic Studio has been working from, from here at the edge of the Owens Dry Lake to explore self-sustaining and self-diversifying systems of exchange that feed emergent properties that regenerate the life web. There's so much to say here, and I'm sure we will throughout the length of this salon. But let me tell you first just a little bit about today. The conversation you're about to share with us will culminate with questions from you. As the conversation goes on, you can use your chat bar to write down these questions. We'll also be using that chat bar to share resources, both about the work we've done at Metabolic Studio, catalyzing these systems of exchange, and with sound, which at its very root is the first sign of any life system, vibration. And today is also the fifth anniversary of our work with Detroit um, and choirs of Detroit in particular, another location with distressed water. But as we know from the news today, Michigan is in, in a flood situation, quite, quite the opposite context of the Owens Dry Lake. And we're very fortunate that our salon today will end with one of the poets we met in Detroit five years ago, who's with us virtually to end this salon with spoken word. Today I introduce to you Douglas Lee in conversation with Olan Jones and hosted by Ryan Albert. Douglas Lee is a multidisciplinary artist whose primary focus lies within the sounding arts a multi-instrumentalist specializing in non-traditional musical instrument performance and research, experimental instrument building techniques and composition. He's been a featured soloist or performing artist in hundreds of live productions in North America, as well as multiple solo appearances on BBC, NBC, and other television programs in North America, Europe, and Asia. He's also served as musical technical consultant on film, television, and commercial sets in Los Angeles, and has been a fixture on the live music scene there for years. He first began working with me at Metabolic Studio for our performance, Silver and Water, in these silos at the edge of Paya Hunadu in 2009, and has been the foundational team person with the division of our practice that deals with sound. Olan Jones has also been working with Sonic Division since Silver and Water in 2009. However, we've had to share her with luminaries of theater and film where she's an award-winning actress and has worked with some of the industry's most amazing directors like Tim Burton. When she's not winning prizes for her acting skills or writing scripts or mounting her own operas with her overtone industries, 
her amazing opera company. She's devoted to creating spontaneous combustion of choir wherever she can. Now the poetics of that concept are already so interdependent and biodiverse to segue neatly into the, today's salon and our work together. Tomorrow, May tw 22nd is World Biodiversity Day. Why not be a part of an interdependent choir? Sing with the birds and bees and butterflies, the city birds and cats and dogs, the migrating waterfowl, the ranging mammals and the wild horses. Our interdependence choir has been about that. We started to gather at Metabolic Studio in January, honoring Buckminster Fuller's Earth Day proclamation, his declaration of interdependence. Oland composed a beautiful score for our interdependent choir, which we learned together in real space and then non-local space since our quarantine began. This salon today will introduce you to this choir practice. We will meet tonight as we do each Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific time to come together while we're apart. We use this Zoom platform and the link to that will be on the chat bar if any of you want to join in. Join us and bounce your voice via space to this silo. Our colleague, Jaime Juantera Lopez Walters is in this silo as we speak. He will bridge the real and the spatial virtually. And we will show you how we are bending the space time divide. This is a fourth dimensional soundscaping and I'm eternally grateful for my nearly two year conversation with Ryan Albert, who will be hosting this conversation. Ryan is a sound artist and composer that has helped me enormously connect the physical space with the ethereal space now in compositions, both in California, Venice, and around the world. So over to you, Ryan, and thank you. Hi there, so great to be here. Hello everyone. Um, I think maybe one of the best ways that we could start this conversation is to show the ambient sounds that are happening at PPG. Um, these are sounds that are created by wind through instruments that Doug and Lauren uh, created, and I'm sure they will give their explanation soon. Um, but first, uh, Doug, if we can, uh, let's listen. Let's listen into the ambient of KPPG. That sounds incredible. Um, and now I think another thing that we would like to do is do a little bit of a live experiment. And one of the things that we do at Metabolic Studio is with the choir, the interdependence choir is we send our, the sounds of our voice into the silo and our, the sounds of our voice reverberate and this in this huge industrial ruin and is then sent back to us um and i think we should try it out um but before we do that um does jaime need to uh turn down some certain the the uh 
the levels on the mixer, Doug? Yeah, maybe some of those ambient mics can come down a little bit um, that are hanging out on the rooftop. So Zoom hates uh, ambient noise, it turns out. It's not very into experimental sound. So we chill out some of those mics so that we can get the voice to come through a little bit. Awesome. And I could just say something about what it's like with the choir now, where we're all in our own homes and you feel that you are singing one whole long sustained note together. And the Zoom platform, because it makes its own decisions, just grabs it. So instead of a beautiful whole chord, it, you're hearing back <laughs> from all these different little squares. But then when it's sent into the silo, it gets reconstituted as a whole. So that's part of what we've been experiencing. Now that yeah, we're it's kind, of, it's kind of a great way to have our voice intermingle in an actual physical space because we can't be in a physical space right now together because of the quarantine that's happening, but it gives a space for at least a representation of our voices going through a speaker to have a space to be with, be with each other. Um, so um, are we able to give that a shot right now? Awesome, we got the thumbs up from Doug. We're still hearing a little bit of the ambient. I don't know if that... It, it bleeds everywhere, it's fine. Oh, okay, cool. So Olan, take it away. Okay, so Lauren asked me to try singing the real name of that area into the silo. So I'll give it a whirl. Amazing. So what we just heard right there is Olan's voice, her singing into the Zoom platform, and then from Zoom it heads all the way to the foothills of the Sierra in Payahunadu and fills the silo and then is sent back to us and we hear it through Zoom, but also you, if you go to uh, kppglive.org, someone can probably put it in the chat bar. Um, it's always, you can always hear it, um, but I think, uh, let's try it again, but maybe with a couple other voices, Olan. Yeah. So, Livia, who's part of the Metabolic Studio now and has worked with me a lot with Overtone Industries and the Spontaneous Combustion Choir, maybe you can unmute and you'll sing, then I'll add on, then Ryan can add on, and then we'll all step out of the way for the silo to do its beautiful thing. Uh. We say Paya Hunadu, just one after the other. Paya Hunadu. Paya Hunadu. 
Should we try? Can can can? Should we try unfreezing all of the co-hosts to do this one last time since it's so magical? Yeah, let's do that. And uh, I guess just try and come in one after another, and then look for the cutoff so we can all mute and let the. Okay, I'll follow. I'll follow Ryan. Okay. So I'll start it off. Oh, okay. Or maybe Olam, Livia, you, and yeah. then me. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then anyone else who wants to follow? Of the co-hosts. Of the co-hosts. Everyone else stay mute because it further complicates the, the situation. <laughs> okay, so I'll start and uh, then Lydia, then Ryan, then you, Lauren, right? Yeah. Okay. And then Douglas. <laughs> Multitasking as ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Okay, I'm So I think one of the things that feels so special about that, not not only, not just because of how like how reverberant and lush it is, but it's that that there is a physical space that our voices are together in the time of quarantine, and it really it re it just feels like a very special thing. Um, and Olan, for you to be hosting this choir with Metabolic Studio. You know, it, it, I don't know, there, there's just something so very uh, precious about it and caring, I feel. And it's such a wonderful, loving part of my Thursday night, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, has this, have you, how has writing for choir and uh, ho hosting, a, being, hosting a choir changed for you since this has all happened? Immensely. Um, that the big thing in getting to know the online choir and also getting to know the silo more is learning to compose very differently. Uh, in, in most of my compositions, I care a lot about very specific times and rhythms that connect and hook up. And, and that just, I don't know if that can translate now. No, it cannot, it cannot. Well, every so often we had, we've had a little bit of success where everybody has their own metronome. Yeah. And that, and that we've all got our own pots and pans and weird things. And then that goes into the silo and comes back as, you know, beautiful, magical sounds. Exactly, yeah. But as far as 
full on composition I'm I'm interested in now learning to write for this very specific situation. And part of it is the new piece that I, we're all working on, the Cloud Parade. Yep. It's written, it, there's three different parts that work together, but do not line up with each other. And each has a specific melody that has a, has a basic shape of uh, how it should be sung but can also be stretched out however the singer feels like stretching it out. Yep. And then when it's sung simultaneously, it kind of twists around itself. So sometimes it's very dissonant and then all of a sudden it opens up into a beautiful chord and then it finds its way around itself mm -hmm. again. So and it's kind of like a fluxus thing you got going on where there isn't like a set, uh, there is set parts, but it's going to be different every time we, we right. sing. Right. And that's part of the joy of it, too. It's, uh, that is written out, but we've also done, and I think quite successfully uh, with these online choirs, a kind of improvisation where uh, there's, a, there's a chord, like a fifth, a two notes being held. Mm -hmm. And people then can meander a little bit into a melody and then come back to holding that chord. Yeah. And it's something like uh, what Margaret and Christine Wertheim were talking about, where it's more than the sum of its parts, that this collective kind of collaboration that you can't, you cannot, you cannot tell people this, 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 or you could, but who cares? <laughs> 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 so it's what everybody brings to it with their own particular call into this silo yeah and in my experience with it it, it sounds a lot of like working with texture rather than individual phrases you know and right. what textures work best within the silo and that list right. is very long because everything kind of sounds great going through the silo well um, many, many things do mostly they do and yeah <laughs> there exactly. were a couple of surprises like one of my favorite ones when we were putting together some layers of things for the water wheel video mm -hmm. we were all seeds when we were all going, going <laughs> 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 it, it just the silo picked it up and made halos around every seed and it was great <laughs> exactly um and i guess doug what exactly is going on at the silo like how is this how does it work i guess like can you take us a little bit behind the magic veil of what's happening you're muted right now Thank you. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, basically, uh, it's actually quite a simple setup. Uh, a few of the, the si a couple of the silos are rigged with some cables that produce that aeolian effect. Um, so those are literally an uh, uh, aircraft cable that is strung alongside the walls of the silo that reverberates and creates that kind of, it sounds almost like an electronic sound, but it's all yeah. completely acoustic. And that's what we were listening to in the beginning of this talk. And also when we said we're listening to the ambient of the ambient sounds of the silo, that's what we're listening to. Yes, yes, exactly. And then we also have a series of flutes. There's a, a, a hundred uh, flutes that are anywhere from one and a half feet to eight feet tall. Uh, they're people sized flutes basically that are on the roof that play to the different uh, directions of the wind. So there's a north cluster that plays one chord when the wind is coming from the west it plays another chord so on for the south and 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 east um and then basically there's just four microphones uh spread out across the property that uh pick up these ambient sounds uh including you know uh, many other things that you know just happen to be there birds owls yeah. coyotes yeah, I remember the coyote recording that we got. Mm. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's, they're, they're gorgeous. 
Um, and then that basically gets just summed down to a mixer. Uh, that mixer goes online. And then that's the feed that you hear online. And then um, basically, I could probably put up a diagram here. Um, let's see. OK, is that a line diagram? Has everybody seen that? Yeah, that works. So and, and so basically, this is just a line diagram of the four microphones. And they go into a mixer. They go out to uh, one computer and then another redundant computer. And then basically, there's a third computer that lives at the silo that does all of this in reverse. So it's basically a computer that is listening for anything online that we, that we send to a private stream and then plays back that audio inside one of the silos. You'll see at the top right, uh, the one of those silo icons has some speakers inside, mm -hmm. of it. Uh, top left, I'm sorry. Um, and so basically with this system of microphones listening at the silos and then speakers listening to a private stream that we can broadcast anything we want on. That's why we're doing the Zoom platform now. Sometimes we do our uh, Sonic Division jams. Uh, we're always doing our Sonic Division jams through the silos. Um, and that way we can actually, you know, real time physically connect to the location, which, which was the original, uh, one of the original goals. Yeah, kind of having a conversation from, it was first from Los Angeles to uh, Paya Hunadu, but now with the quarantine that's happening, um, with the choir, we're able to go kind of anywhere we want. Whoever has the Zoom link to our choir can now uh, stream their voices into these silos. Like my background here, I'm not actually there. This is just as I'm in Vermont right now, but because of Zoom, one of the things that's available is now I, my voice can be sent to the silos and then back, um, which is just like a, beautiful thing. I keep saying it, but it's like in these times of uh, disunity, like we, we're not together, we have a place to be a unit together um, through the silos and what you and Lauren set up there. Um, Lauren, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I thank you. Um, I, I'd like to add um, that I was really influenced by some of the sand mandalas that Tibetan monks would make with vibration. So that if you had vibration under a, um, a some kind of drum that had sand on it, when the vibration happened, things like, you know, mandalas would form through the vibration itself. Yeah. And so my work with the silos and with Douglas really was about seeing if we could continue those steel cables all the way under the dry lake bed so that the vibration of wind would create berms on the dry lake bed that could help with rehydration ponds. Mm -hmm. So the idea that using wind both for the poetics of making an automatic sound of a landscape by the landscape Exactly. But also exploring that the construction itself could create um, an opportunity to have a self-building landscape form where mm -hmm. berms would form by vibration and then wind would blow them down, but they could be right built up again just by the power of the wind. Well, I didn't know about that, that part of your inspiration for it. And that kind of links to one of my favorite parts of the silos is that, you know, if humans were wiped out tomorrow, the silos are probably still going to be there. And the noise that they are creating through the Aeolian harp and the flutes are still going to be happening. It's still going to be singing and it is really in conversation with mother nature and also by mother nature as in wind and what's happening there um it's really like uh it transplants you you know there nothing in the world to me sounds like what 
uh, PPG sounds like. Absolutely nothing. Um, and I just, it's just such a special spot. And I feel like you and Doug captured, you know, the emotion of what it kind of looks, feels like to me of looking at the dry lake bed. It's an amazing uh, ambient sound that pairs so perfectly with it. I'll jump in for a second here and just note that Jaime is up on the catwalks on the top of the building right now. And so what you're looking at, these, these black uh, uh, pipes, those, those are the, the flutes. You can see them go straight down that walkway right there. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's the flute instrument that I was discussing. That must have been terrifying to install. <laughs> you know, I started out afraid of heights and I ended up not afraid of heights. So. Maybe that's what I need to do to cure myself. <laughs> Lauren, if you have any other silos that need to be prepared, I, I could. Well, maybe... there's probably industrial ruins uh, uh, all over the North America right now that you can uh, exactly that you can go to. But I will say that walking this um, walk is one of the most exciting experiences. And right at the end of this walk is where all of the owls' nests are. So, um, and the owls have been living in these silos for as long as I've been working with them and that began in 2002. So I've been um, going to this space for 18 years and um, I, I owe that privilege to my um, soul sister, Tawny Tatum, who's building this is, who may be on right now. So thank you, Tawny, for that permission. And you can hear all of these blackbirds that you're watching, these crows and ravens who happily make this place their home um, and the owls have been living at the edge of this bridge for the entire time. And you can hear them often at night on kppglive.org, which I really enjoy doing. And when um, we first started uh, thinking about sound here, we realized that while you're driving around uh, the dry lake, you can actually tune in on 89.9 FM and hear the sound, the ambient sound of the silos um, just on your car radio on 89.9 FM. So that way, as you would drive around this scar of the city of Los Angeles, this environmental protection agency, um, Brownfield, uh, they, where uh, they've discovered that more carcinogenic dust gets into the cloud strata here and over the Pacific Ocean all the way into Asia than any other stratum um, on the North American continent. Um, you, can, you can see the um, complex beauty of this location. I mean, it's where early photographers went to, to photograph the West. Uh, um, but to be able to hear it in its in its um, the void that is the absence of the lake, um, and to know that even in that void there is this abundance of living systems that have literally taken roost in this building. Yeah. That reminds me of uh, another composition that we've been working on with Donny Lunn, a member a long time member of the Metabolic Studio and, and also Doreen Kutzka, our yodeling friend. We were working together before we were all pushed out to the far corners of the world. We were working on that owl concerto because the, the recordings of the owls, they have a very specific rhythmic shape that they sing. It was like, boop, 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 boop. They, they were not quite so musical. <laughs> they were more undertones, but that was the basic shape. And we started putting together a whole composition around it. And I'm thinking that might be something to start up in the uh, interdependence choir on Thursday nights too, to start in with a little bit of that. 
Yeah, I think that would be great. That'd be a great way to get us all kind of tuned in to the silo. And, you know, I don't know, the owls would probably be there to join in with us, honestly. <laughs> the owls will be startled. It's like, who have we called up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just incredible looking at uh, Jaime's feud right now, you know. kind of mesmerized by it, especially since I'm here in Vermont and, you know, <laughs> you know totally oh, this yeah. is like actually the complete opposite world that I'm in right now. Yeah. Um, since it's so mes mesmeric and since there's the possibility of just staring and having more conversation, would you guys be cool if we just started letting bees let questions or comments in? So we totally. can- so yeah. these, if, if you want to start earlier than usual with questions so that other people can help guide Jaime if they want to see things or have questions for any of us on what we're doing, um, I think it would be great. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you all for this conversation. I'm actually going to encourage more folks to submit questions in the chat bar. Um, but I did see that Emily Lacey had a couple of questions. I don't know if those, those were answered, but Emily, uh, I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Oh, wow. Uh, hi. Let's see, what did I ask? I asked, um, this, I think I asked about the glass that was made at PPG and what it might've been used for. What kind, what was the application of the glass? So um, Pittsburgh plate glass is was mining the silica that um, was is one of the materials out there in the dry lake. And they built these silos to hold the silica and then they export uh, exported the silica to Pittsburgh, where it was manufactured um, into kind of glass plates for all kinds of buildings and industrial uses. So this was an, like an industrial um, process, uh, very much in line with extractive industry. So basically after Los Angeles extracted water from this location to LA, and actually more than just this location, the, the glacial lakes of the Sierra into LA, um, then Pittsburgh Glass saw the potential to mine the, remain, mine the remaining um, dust uh, and a product to be made elsewhere in it. Doug, can you tell us what Jaime is now pointing down at? Do you know what that is? Uh, yeah, Jaime is at the top of the silo and there's a little porthole up there that's probably about three to four inches in diameter. That's kind of an, acts as an exhaust really um, so he's basically putting his camera down inside that porthole. So what you're looking down there is the bottom of the silo, 80 feet down. Um, and that little like uh, square, that little brown square is actually a very, very large six by six piece of wood. Um, wow. And, and yeah, so that's the view from the top down into the silo. Is that also partially how you were able to hang microphones inside the silos is, from these exhausts? That is exactly how I was able to hang, uh, hang the microphones for sure. Wow. They hang down about 30 feet from uh, well, a different exhaust than one we're looking at, but. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Um, one of the questions that came in from Margaret Wertheim is, can we please have a concerto for the owls um, and the birds? And it occurred to me that um, that's a question too, a sonic question. And I, I want to throw that out to you. Can we now have a, a little throwback for the um, owls and birds, Olan? Sure. I know that a Aaron might be on too, and he might be able to uh, provide a little wind instrument in addition, but I, I'd like to defer to your 
to your answer of that wonderful question. Oh yeah, right now on the spot, let's. Um, is Donnie able to unmute herself and be part of this? And and other other people from the, maybe a couple of other people from our choir that are, are used to singing together? I can do it. Okay. Um, so who sure. do we have? Olivia, are you able to join? I'm able to join. Awesome. <laughs> Maya's happy Maya. to sing. <laughs> Maya's happy to sing. Probably Emily Lacey would be happy to sing. I think Phil is in. Great. I'll unmute all of these folks. Um, we also have uh, Marianne from the choir here. Fabulous. OK. I think someone needs to unmute her, though, because she's not a co-host. Thank you. <laughs> So, um, is Donnie unmuted? I don't think she's going to be able to because she's on the Instagram live. Oh, okay. Hi, Donnie. <laughs> and uh, I'm hearing your owl sound from here. That's another <laughs> thing that I think we're all learning with these platforms is this subtlety of listening to each other that the patients require to just hold for a moment and hear what's happening between us without any of the usual up close and personal clues. So I think let's try and if we give it like for about 10 or 15 seconds at first, are we set up to be heard through the silo duck? That, um, yes, we are. Let's start first with the aviary without any actual particular shapes of the hoots of the owls, but let's just start with an aviary of everybody who's available to sing right now. And we'll do that for about 15 seconds and I'll cut off and we'll let it play through the silo. And so when Olan cuts off, we'll all mute. Yes, that's what, yep. that's, thank you. All right. Oh, we're going inside the silo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just start with some whistles and some clicks and whatever, because it's very sensitive. You can do small sounds and the silo will hear, the silo hears all. Let's start with some whistles and things. And then the aviary. Oh, you're muted. Awesome. Want to try one more, and this time, anybody who wants to pick up that shape that the, the owls have demonstrated as their kind of core communication shape, just every so often throw in a little bit of boop, 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 boop. We do it again for maybe 20 seconds, and at the cutoff, everybody mutes. But let's start with the aviary, too, because I, I think the aviary sounds great in that.
yeah, I think we could definitely develop that in the Thursday night choir. That, that sounded great to me. Yeah, I think we're going to have to add that to our repertoire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I do have other questions coming in now. Um, is it okay if I call on some folks? Yes. Awesome. So next, uh, Maya Bond has a question. And Maya, I think you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I was curious about the coyote recording that was briefly mentioned. And I was wondering if it would be possible to talk a little bit about um, that sound and also that experience, what, you know, like, I'm specifically curious about like what kind of coyote sound was captured um, if they were just near the silos or present in the silos and also um, if there's a recording of it that's accessible for us to hear. Sounds amazing. I'll jump in on that. Um, it might take me a second to find that recording, um, but basically it was, uh, I was actually listening from Los Angeles walking around my neighborhood at like midnight like I do and um and I and I just heard this chorus of of coyotes um I'm not sure exactly where they were they were very close to the silo they were clearly either inside the building or just right outside the perimeter because it was just clear as a bell there was about I'm my guess is six or seven of them and just in this incredible, lovely chorus, uh, I, I, I live in LA, so of course I'm very used to coyote song, and I, I think it's just one of the most beautiful things. Um, and so I immediately just kind of ran home, and and you can you know I can log on to the PPG computer from at home, so I quickly grabbed the sound and 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 uploaded it uh, to some platform and sent it to myself and then immediately brought it to the studio the next day and was like oh my gosh look at this and listen to this um and it's pretty lucky that you heard it then because if you did if you weren't listening at that exact moment you might may, maybe wouldn't have you know known about it yeah exactly we 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 do record everything 24 hours a day that's been going on this this silo is an actual what six five six year long uh recording uh, uh yeah i think we started recording in uh 2012 um when i began this conceptual uh sound piece that i call requiem for water and the idea was to make a sound that would continuously play. It was a glacial time composition. So that all you would need is basically the wind to continue and the silo to stand in order to continually have the sound playing to the dry lake bed. So it's currently uh, been eight years and the idea of this uh, piece was, again, to connect ourselves. I mean, if musical composition is so fundamentally about time, then um, how do you make a monument which is sonic to the void with an aspiration for it to energize that void and not alienate the myriad of living systems for whom vibration is also navigational? Is there another? Is yes. there another question? Yes. Um, Haz with a bunch of Z's. I'm going to unmute you for your question. Okay, perhaps they are not there. Uh, Rachel Wilkie has a question. I am going to move on and we'll come back, perhaps. So Rachel, I'll unmute you now. Uh, hi, thank you. Can I just say thank you so much to uh, the Metabolic Studio. Thank you so much to Lauren Bon. I've been attending every salon so far because I'm just so intrigued by this amazing work that you're doing. And of course, 
this uh, this particular salon has just been so inspirational to me. Um, I live part time in Los Angeles, but part time in a little town called Olancha, which sits right on the Owens Lake. And um, it's so interesting because I think Lauren partly answered my question just now because my husband and I, we actually bought our place in 2012. So that was actually the same year that you began working on this project. And um, I just want to say that this land is magical and it's, it's just, it blows my mind every time. And my husband and I, we escape and we spend time out there and we, we obviously love to drive around the whole area and um, you know visit all the beautiful little towns out there but sometimes we just sit on our land and just breathe and um, the mountains, Alantia Peak just looks right onto the land and we are just so grateful to be a part of this land and so I would, uh, my, my question was really about your original inspiration for creating this project and Maybe you've partly answered that already, um, speaking to the influence of the glacial lake that it once was. Um, if there's anything that you would like to elaborate on that in terms of your inner inspiration for even taking on board a project which is just so unbelievable in terms of creating a soundscape that relates directly to the landscape. Um, I just would like to say it's, it's just beautiful and it's been a big inspiration for me for many years. Thank you. Rachel, first of all, thank you so much for being here today. And I follow your adventures on social media and I'm very <laughs> thankful for them. Um, <laughs> thank you. You know, I think that my heart was so affected by uh, this site. And the more I learned about it, the more I felt sound was the way to uh, work here. And I think the thing that really catalyzed that for me was um, the work that I started with uh, Douglason in 2009 allowed me to meet a lot of the people who live around the silo. And one of them in particular um, really catalyzed the question of what, what can be done about this site and, and and that's Kathy Bancroft who is a Paiute woman who is also um, the main uh, voice uh, uh, to advocate for this dry lake being a lake again and part of her advocacy for this is that the bones of her ancestors are in this lake oh, wow. and so the story of colonial settler um, presence in, in what uh, was Paya Hunadu um, and is now called Owens Valley and will again be Paya Hunadu, I'm certain, is that um, the native people were who lived around here were rounded up and drowned in that lake. Oh, gosh. And so she protects their her ancestors' remains by advocating that this lake needs to be a lake again mm -hmm. and not treated simply as an industrial site for dust mitigation, that it has a pre story to the extraction of water. And it was in that idea for me that every place is a story of its own unfolding, that the idea of making a work that creates itself, that is so um, simple in its existence, could wait like a siren on the edge of this scar for uh, the heart to come back into the manifestation of what we artists do. That's beautiful, thank you. Thank you for your question. Great. Um, JC is our next question. So I am going to unmute you now. Thanks. Um, thank you everybody for this really stunning um, conversation with using Zoom as a medium to like a whole other level, which has been really incredible and exciting to um, witness. Um, my question, which 
sorry, it's like super ranty. Um, but I had the pleasure of, of spending a lot of time with, um, and it's like a six month long timepiece that Metabolic made for um, the Broken Rails, oh gosh, exhibition last year um, in Venice. And I guess I was just struck by walking around the, watching, watching the silo, seeing the silo and walking around there. It's such an opposite landscape. You have this dry place where there used to be water. Um, and, and, um, and I guess, I guess this massive distance and like physical scale. Um, and it is so opposite to like the wet, almost sinking city and, um, the kind of intimate physical scale, um, of, of that work. And I guess I was just wondering like how, how your, how your process around making these sonic monuments kind of lends itself to such different landscapes. Uh, thank you. It's so nice to see you, JC, and be with you in this way. Um, yeah, a year ago, uh, right now, we had just finished the first of six full moon, um, um, full moon deep listings at the Chiesa in, uh, in Venice, where um, we were on the edge of a city that is sinking as the Mediterranean encroaches in on it. And again, I think the connection is about making a sound that ties us in to the bigger picture of how big is here and what is it that we're a part of. And I'm going to ask Ryan Albert, who's uh, the host today, uh, to talk about his compositional work uh, and his work with Donnie, who's on Instagram, in um, helping us realize a score for the full moon that would connect uh, Venice and the tides with the moon. Yeah, so that was uh, extreme. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to be able to have helped you work on that piece. Um, but the the logic behind it was we Lauren wanted kind of a representational um, kind of map of the phases of the moon and and its effect on water. And the way that we did that was is we designated a sound frequency that was the sound frequency of the moon. And over the course of the month from new moon to full moon, uh, there was a drone, I believe it was G sharp, or actually 210 hertz to be specific. And there was a drone that happened that in the entire month. And then there was another note that was playing along with it that went from 210 hertz to 315 hertz, which is a perfect fifth from 210 hertz. And when it was like a very slow um, uh, glissando, uh, like it, the intervals were, and when it reached the perfect fifth, it represented the full moon. Um, so we were just kind of thinking of the beating tones that you hear when you listen to intervals. It's very reminiscent of transverse waves going through water and the pull of the moon on uh, water itself. Um, and that was kind of the main inspiration for it, which is very different from the dry lake bed of uh, Paya Hunadu. That's amazing. Thank you. Lauren, you're muted. Maybe Olan can say a few words. She was actually one of uh, the people who hosted and held space sonically for the um, one of the full moons. And, sh and actually, um, uh, Livia is also here, who was also there in Venice to support Olan. So maybe you could, could say a little bit about that, Olan. Well, it was what it's hard to gather up the words for it it was such a full experience and uh, first of all the place and the sculpture and what had already been brought to it and what was already alive there and the the uh, sound sculpture too was something that Livia and i were walking into and uh we had an idea to kind of share with whoever came by this spontaneous combustion method of 
listening and creating music together. It's a, it's a method that through some listening techniques, a group of people who have never met before can make beautiful choral music together. And we went through like, oh, let's stand here for this one and here for that one and here for that one. And then what happened was life came flowing in and all these different sorts of people who were absolutely willing to just jump in. And we started with like the key that the, uh, that the earth and the moon were in through this sound sculpture. And then we just sang to different bodies of water a wish for different bodies of water because that's part of that this method is to have a uh, something sacred inside that you sing from with to and so we would we had the different bodies of water in mind and we would say this is a wish for the you know the oceans this is the wish for the lakes and people would just jump right in and all sorts of different people from different languages, different, really different walks of life. And some, some of these improvisations went on for like 20 minutes and we, the whole event was six hours of starting a song with this group, they would leave starting a song with that group and all just spontaneously created from the environment. Livia, maybe you have more things to say about that. Um, yeah, I was, I just think that um, part of what was special about that also was that Olan and I got to be brought together in this really amazing thought through environment and that I had um, sung with Olan for many years and kind of absorbed her spontaneous combustion methods. Um, and so it was really a wonderful um, like meeting of so many different things, Ryan's sculpture, Lauren's whole um, exhibition, and um, kind of the, the time I had spent with Olan, and then all these people who came through at various moments. Um, yeah, and it, it, I, it was a, a very special experience that I think I feel like um, I have threads connecting to this Zoom choir and how um, Olan and Lauren have continued to bring people um, together uh, in song uh, through various obstacles. <laughs> I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump in here. Um, there's so much more to say and so many more questions that are coming through, um, but to talk about our interdependence and how that journey uh, brought us to Detroit. Um, you know, the Venice, the water world of Venice has its analogy on this continent with the Great Lakes. And the studio's um, desire to understand the interconnectedness of all of the hydraulic boundaries of our continent um, has enabled us to be curious and and want to know more about the stewards of the watershed of the plains and the Great Lakes. Um, and part of that story took us to Detroit where for a number of years, um, there's been uh, terrible issues around uh, watershed offs. And despite the um, complexity of that story and the um, effect on people's lives um, the choir still remained the mainstay of social fabric of that place. And with Detroit's um, powerful history of, with music, um, the church and the choir um, and the relationship to the music industry um, really continued to be at the soul of Detroit's vitality. So um, we, through that engagement five years ago, brought choirs together at United Sound Studios in Detroit, and they projected their voices into this very silo. Um, and we recorded uh, that uh, sound, but also were able to somehow visualize these two extreme conditions of the Great Lake 
and the missing leg. Um, and that work brought us uh, many surprises, one of whom is um, that one person used the time in United Sound uh, Studios to actually do spoken word. And I want to make sure that um, she gets a chance to um, be heard today while we talk about the dry lake. And that's Caroline Ferrari, who will come on just after our colleague Rochelle um, does some shout outs uh, about our work in Detroit and some of the people and organizations that we've met here. But first, I wanted to just thank Jaime tirelessly for carrying a camera over the last <laughs> um, hour um, in PPG. <laughs> um, and say how amazing it's been. Uh, there's no way to talk about the silos without being there. So that's one of the things that um, this salon has uh, been an experience, I think, for all of us that have taken the work deeper to be here in this Zoom platform with our friends and colleagues in Detroit and in Brooklyn and in the Owens Valley and Douglas doing his magical mixing in um, downtown LA by the LA River, which is the ultimate receiver of the snow cap um, that falls from the sky just where the silos are. The water is just flowing out right past him. And Olan in, in Los Angeles and Ryan in Vermont um, and me in the Santa Monica Mountains today. Um, this Zoom platform really allows us an embodied space place of our interdependence. And so to come back uh, to connecting us to the moon, tomorrow is a new moon. The stars will be crazy out in the Owens Valley. Tune in to KPPG and listen to the Owens Valley while you look at the stars tomorrow night and you'll hear the owls most likely and other living systems there. Um, and uh, join us tonight for the Interdependence Choir, Olivia's provided the link and you'll get to work with the most incredible synthesizer of all this wonder, which is Olan Jones. So thank you all so much for uh, being here today. And um, now over to you, Rochelle. Thank you, Lauren. And thanks so much for um, having me give these Detroit shout outs. You know, Detroit was an amazing opportunity for many of us in the studio go and visit back in 2014 when we heard about the widespread water shutoffs and the housing foreclosures that were happening because people who couldn't already afford these um, rising rate hikes in water were having their back water bills that were unpaid tax, attached to their taxes and then also losing their homes. So a group of us from the studio went there in 2014 where we met a lot of the organizations people, water warriors, women water warriors, a lot of them, who are still on the ground active with the churches, with the community centers, um, and with artists uh, still delivering water today. Um, we're part of that. And so our engagement actually began in 2014, and it was um, an investigation which turned into a witnessing where the UN came and heard uh, from the people of Detroit about their lack to running water and hygiene um, and declared that these water, water shutoffs violated water as a human right. So since that time, um, we've done creative projects like Lauren was saying, Voices of Detroit at MOCAD Museum of Contemporary Art Detroit. We've also been to churches on Juneteenth, which was the announcement um, that slavery had officially ended. Um, that was an all day celebration with choirs and poets and that was actually recorded by Doug Lee, Dave Bain from Metabolic Studio at Central United Methodist Church and then broadcast through the silos on Juneteenth, which is June 19th. Um, so, so many wonderful things and memories there that I just wanted to share personally. And just, I do have an update now um, about Detroit and sadly, the things that are still going on there during COVID-19 with water shutoffs and housing foreclosures. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an update on that and then um, a report from what a lot of the nonprofit organizations who are grant making has supported how they are um, rising to this challenge at this time. So um, since the outbreak of COVID-19, uh, the state of Michigan's reported 52,000 plus cases of the virus, 5,000 deaths in Detroit, there were 19,000 cases and rising 
and almost 3,000 deaths. Um, the Guardian newspaper stated yesterday that Africans Americans are dying of COVID-19 at three times the rate of white people. So more than 20,000 African Americans, about one in 2,000 have died from this disease. And as we know, hand washing and hygiene is essential to preventing the spread. So um, 141,000 households since 2014 have had their water shut off. And in 2019, 23,000 homes, three fifths are still without water um, as of 2020. So lack, local activists are championing um, now how to get the water to people. The mayor came up with a plan since COVID-19 um, came on the scene and said, okay, we'll do a restoration of Detroiters water, 25 bucks to reconnect, 25 bucks a month for the duration of the pandemic with free repairs. But the problem is there are already back bills that people um, are owing. So um, it's not about in a city of residents who can't afford to pay the bill, um, plans that are misdiagnosing the problem uh, are not a solution. So according to our sources in Detroit, this plan has not gone well. There's still over 9,500 families in poverty struggling to obtain the water access. Um, and there have, uh, the administration is lowballing the numbers saying that there's only 1,400 homes that have registered, but there are still about 3,000 that are living without water or modern sanitation. The foreclosures as of COVID-19 have stopped. So there's a moratorium on those right now, but in the beginning of 2020, there were about 10,000 properties about to go into foreclosure. So um, there's a lot still to do in Detroit. I do want to say today we'd like to offer a shout out to the tireless advocates who continue to protect water as our shared commons, as a human right, and also who are fighting for food security, social and environmental justice in the Great Lakes region. And we recognize we, the people of Detroit, who are continuing door to door to deliver delivery to, of water to 265 homes per week, 20 pallets per week to Flint. Um, they're distributing 80 pallets of water per month to about 3,000 homes. They do this through St. Peter's Episcopal Church, which is where we at, as Metabolic Studio first came and we helped do those water deliveries. Um, there's a hotline there, a food, a shower, and a laundry hub. And uh, that's been a water station since 2014. They're working with Frontline Detroit, who are young warriors supporting relief work with their strong bodies to actually move those very heavy pallets of water, food, and supplies to the people who need them. Um, East Michigan Environmental Action Council, located at Cass Corridor Commons, which is a historic social justice hub, an old church. They've stepped up, they're now a temporary water pod and they're distributing water to those who need it. Uh, Michigan Welfare Rights Organization are continuing their Turn the Water On campaign, assisting residents with the water shutoffs, advocating for a water affordability plan, which they've been championing for over a decade. Um, Detroit's also a food desert where a lot of the low income residents are struggling to obtain good nutrition. So this problem has fostered a real culture of urban farming and networking there. Um, and that has generated a lot of experts and activists that are teaching um, growing your own food in urban settings. So these gardens are networking now and they're continuing to plant, share seed, seedlings, you bring food and recycle it for compost and you get seedlings and, and, uh, and seeds to grow your own. And they're also providing technical assistance for growing food throughout the summer months. So shout out to Oakland Avenue Urban Farm. They're an emergency food hub working with lo local restaurants who are now closed, chefs who are now not working, who are preparing hot meals together, which they pick up and deliver to needy families. They're also resourcing perishable foods which are getting dis redistributed to the community and they have been feeding up to 3,500 families a week. Keep Growing Detroit, um, is, which is a gardening network citywide, has grown 100,000 transplants um, for food and they've done just over 2,000 curbside cold weather seed plant and perennial fruit pickups. They're offering free garden classes on Zoom, tutorials online, 
Um, also Detroit Black F Food Security Network, who continues to do great work in their area, the Feed em Freedom Garden, Flint Fresh in Flint, which is providing 2,400 weekly veggie boxes from 30 local farms and farmers, protein bags with eggs, milk, and meat to community groups for redistribution. Um, and the James and Grace Lee Boggs Center for Nurturing Community Leadership, um, they're working with frontline young activists and artists to respond to the continued water crisis, increasing petitions and the social media presence. Their Burwood House, which is a, um, a colleague of the Boggs Center, is active with education discussions with young people inside the house discussing this moment and their, their needs. Uh, the Riverwise magazine, which is all about things affecting um, the Detroit River, is coming out in digital and print, which is going to be distributed for food, uh, free at food giveaway locations. Um, the Bog Center also said that there is a new coalition that's organizing on the east side that is uh, Southeast Detroit Solutionaries. They're creating a market space to engage solar, wind, fab labs, education, training, and work food distribution, art initiatives, and the dream of becoming an east side market for community building and sustainable economics. So there's a full list of all of our many incredible <laughs> Detroit, Flint, and Great Lakes grantees and links to their work that's, that are going to be posted on our chat bar. So feel free to research them further. And now I'm gonna turn um, the mic over to Carolyn Ferrari, AKA Diamond Dancer. And she's gonna close us out today with an original poem. Hi, everybody. Oh my gosh. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Um, th thank you so much. Um, the work is so incredible. Thank you. And this is all full circle for me now because now I can see the silos from when we did this stuff and I couldn't put it all together. So now it's like all completely together. So um, I'm so humbled to have been a part of such a wonderful work and um, thank thankful. Um, the poem, I had it up, okay, here we go, that I want to share um, is called Tune In. And just a little brief backstory, because I know we're running out of time. Um, I wrote the poem when I was in Portugal, working on some music stuff with some other friends. And I was looking out uh, from like a rooftop, and I could see over the city, and I could hear a lot of the same sounds you hear in any city. There were dogs barking and there were kids playing and there were trucks going by and things like that. And it just really got me thinking about um, the interconnectedness of all of us, no matter where we are on the planet. And so that is why I wanted to share the tune in. Um, and I'm not cussing in the poem, I swear the phrase is called this funk for life. So just so that when you guys hear that, that's what it is and not um, profanity. <laughs> um, so here we go. Tune in. Drums are man and woman in funky rhythmic dance, creating life right before us. Congas rain down, bass, male, primal, deep. Couple with bongos, female, light, tribal. Sun, funk for life. Rain and sun bring growth, life, tune in. Hands speak, clap patterns, snap, call and response to this music, this funk for life music. Hands talk, echo this funk for life. Are you tuned in? Are you tuned in? Are you tuned in as feet move, carry us powerfully back and forth, heavy, strong and sure, Stomping patterns alternate with light, carefree motions like infants first experience imbalance. Each step adds to the funk for life. Stumping, light, move, tune in. Are you tuned in? Funky synth sounds like children's laughter, melodic and buoyant. Funk for life, lifting our spirits to innocent childlike joy. Are you tuned in to this funk for life? Get lifted, get lifted on the funk, get lifted. Listen, can you hear birds trumpeting their rhythmic calls? 
Funky dogs bark cadence gruffs and happy like guitar riffs that move our soul. Funk for life is a loving mother stirring in their kitchen. Pots and pans rattle dinner like hi-hats and snare drums. Funk for life is everywhere. Are you tuned in? Funk for life is your hey brother high five slaps like strings plucked on an upright bass. Funk for life is that first hello. Smile that sparks positive vibration that carries on and on from one person to the other. Funk for life is everywhere. Are you tuned in? Can I get a high five? Can I get a high five, my brother? Are you tuned in? Tune in. Thank you. that carries on and on from one person to the other. Funk for life is everywhere. Are you tuned in? Can I get a high five? Can I get a high five? Are you tuned in? Tune in. Tune in next week, everybody, as we begin our conversation uh, to deepen our understanding of Paya Hunadu with Chris Hohag uh, and host Maya Bon. And thank you for this week's host, Ryan Albert and Douglas Lee, Olan Jones and the Sonic Division of Metabolic Studio. We love you, Carolyn. That was amazing. Funk for life, everybody. Unmute yourself if you feel like it on your way out. And Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank, so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Thank you. Was Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Funk for life. Muchas gracias. Funk for life. Fun for life. Fun for life.